Hey guys, and welcome to another Let's Play. This is something a little bit different. This is Pikmin for the GameCube. Well, at least it originally came out in the GameCube. I'm actually playing it on the Wii version, which is slightly enhanced, and I'm uh, playing that on a uh, Wii U. But it is still the same game, more or less, as uh, came out on the GameCube all the way back in 2001, which is kind of scary to uh to think of right now so yeah as i'm uh, as i said this is the wii version which is slightly improved it's in widescreen and it uses the wii mote and nunchuck which some of you will remember i hate the wii mote and the nunchuck i consider it my most hated controller of all time however for this game it actually works quite well. Um, not necessarily my recording setup. <laughs> this is going to be quite weird to uh, to um, record because I'm sitting at my desk with a Wiimote and nunchuck, which actually you need to be quite far back from the sensor bar, and I don't have that luxury. Um, it also has some bug fixes. It has slightly sharper graphics, at least to my eyes. A little bit better frame rate. But I don't know whether that's because we're playing on the Wii U or whether that's because um, it was upgraded for the Wii. I'm not really sure. Also, the AI is better with some of the Pikmin. This is a rather unique game in the Nintendo library. This is, well, it's kind of difficult to explain. You control a little group of Pikmin, which are little stupid um, carrot things that are sentient that follow you around and do your bidding, which is... A lot of fun but this game is best explained uh, as you play it now when I picked up my GameCube all the way back in probably 2003 I'm gonna say 2003 because I didn't get one on launch I got one when the system was basically dead uh, I went to my local shop to buy an Xbox game that I really wanted and I could not buy that game because it had sold out. You know, this was back when pre-ordering uh, a game actually meant something, you know. And I didn't want to go home empty-handed. And I was a huge Microsoft fanboy at the time. Um, if it wasn't Microsoft, it if it didn't have that label on the plastic box, I was not interested in it. Um, but I saw this GameCube for about £45, I think, or something like that. Um, with a collection of games, which literally cost nothing, um, a couple of quid each. Yeah, this must have been about two years after the GameCube came out. And obviously, the, the, as people know, the GameCube was a colossal failure. Uh, and it was dirt cheap very quick. So I picked up my cube. I picked up um, Mario Sunshine, I believe, to this day. One of my favorite Mario games. I picked up Pikmin, and I think some Star Fox game, possibly, I think. Uh, might have been Star Fox Adventures, actually, which is a, a brilliant game. A lot of people don't like it, but I love it. Last game made by Rare for Nintendo. Um, and I took it home, and I was fully expecting not to like the system, and I was ready to tear a new one because I was in fanboy mode, and I... I'm going to buy this because I know I hate it, blah, blah, blah. This will validate my hatred of every other platform apart from, uh, you know, my my hero Microsoft. Uh, and I plugged it in. I threw this game in and I was like, oh, no, I got um, Wind Waker with it as well. And I plugged it in and holy shit, did that shatter my fanboy instincts which have been shattered ever since that moment and this is why i'm now a complete it's probably this game here that shattered that fanboy illusions and even to this day uh, i am completely neutral i love the playstation i love the xbox and i'm a i like nintendo i wouldn't say i love nintendo but i like nintendo you know um and it's probably because of this game anyway uh i got random comment uh, the other day uh, asking me to do more Nintendo games and I was like hmm yes yes maybe we could and they specifically asked for Pikmin and I'm like you know what I've actually been thinking about doing this game for a very long time I haven't completed this game since way back when on the GameCube 
I have watched a couple of Let's Plays of it over the years, and there are people that are significantly better at this game than I, I can assure you of that. Um, but it's an interesting one, and I fancy doing something a little bit different. So, without any further bullshit... Wow, we were five minutes in. Let's get into this. This is running on the Wii U. So we have HDMI output. So I've played it a little bit to get back into it. And, well, <laughs> it all kind of came flooding back to me. This game has a nice little storyline as well, and I like the characters. I never played Pikmin 2, and I never played Pikmin 3. Uh, I always wanted to, but I just never have because of time. However, I do own all of these games. Um, Pikmin 2 I've seen an LP of, and my god, is that game not funny as hell. So, let's go new game. I love the music in this game. The impact site. Oh my! Well, we've just seen a rocket ship uh, get impacted with a meteor, and that didn't look so uh, so good. And here is us. Listen to this music. It's so weirdly wonderful. My name is Captain Ulamar. Whilst travelling through space, my ship was struck by a meteor. I must have blacked out. And I awoke on the surface of a weird planet with so many parts lost. The skeletal hole of my beloved dolphin, important, is a painful sight. The engine is gone. I'm stranded. To make matters worse, my atmospheric sensors indicate this planet's environment contains high levels of poisonous oxygen. My life support systems can function for only 30 days. If I can't repair the dolphin by then, no, no, no. Better not think about that. I must find the missing ship parts. So here we are, Captain Ulamar. We um, seem to have run into a bit of trouble. Now there's our ship, the dolphin. Now the dolphin's interesting because the code name for the GameCube was Dolphin. Uh, and that, I assume, is why they decided to call uh, the ship that. Uh, also, this was this game was made and all, uh, dreamt up by uh, Miyamoto, or whatever, however the hell you say his name. Uh, the guy that created Mario and uh, basically all of Nintendo's uh, main franchises, including um, Metroid, uh, etc. He was basically uh, Yu Suzuki of uh, Nintendo. Everybody knows him. And um, so this was his creative genius. And well, it definitely has his stank all over it. Let's put it that way. Anyway, we're destination fucked. So let's start exploring our little area, shall we? A strange thing has appeared before me. I had barely begun my search when it reared up as if it was waiting for me. Then it dropped a single seed. What is it? Is it alive? Is it is a machine? It resembles a vegetable on my home planet that we call an onion. I shall call this an onion. Two. Right, well that's a little bit weird, isn't it? But hey ho, it's ejected a strange seed onto the floor. See that it's growing. Gee, I wonder what would happen if we yank this thing out of the ground. The seed the onion dropped took root in the soil and has now produced an adorable little sprout. This sprout emits a strange light and it sways back and forth without the benefit of wind. I cannot help but think it is calling to me. I am compelled. 
I must approach it and press A. Hmm. Well, I don't know about you, Omar, and I'm not sure if that's the correct thing to do, but here we go. Extraordinary! When I plucked the sprout, it turned out to be a living creature, not a plant. Picking it has done no visible damage. It just stands there, staring at me. Its shape is so similar to the Pick Pick brand carrots I love so much. I believe I shall call it a Pikmin. Here I am, stranded on a toxic planet, fighting to survive, and yet I am intrigued. I must research this fascinating creature. I shall try to grab it with A and then throw it in the direction I point. And I will call it to my side with B. Hmm. Perhaps it will react to C and pressing down on the D-pad whilst pointing as well. The following controls appear to allow... Yeah, blah, blah, blah. Okay, that's just the controls. So, yeah, we can push down on the D-pad and kind of order this little chap around. We can pick him up and throw him. And we can set him to do tasks. Tasks that would be impossible for us. Now, if we throw him... He will uh, search for a task nearby. And if he sees none, he will stand there patiently. Now, we can either walk into him to enlist him. Or we can uh, call him over with our whistle. Now... Oh. What does this Pikmin think of me? I must observe its reactions. The more I... Th things I try, the more reactions I can catalogue. I shall attempt to grab and throw it with A. Call it to my side with B. Perhaps it will react to C. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've just done that. Right. So let's chuck our little friend over this flower here with a red one in the middle. Very strange. Aha! It has produced a pellet and he is taking the pellet back to his base. Interesting has produced more. Astonishing! The onion has sown more seeds. The small red pellet the Pikmin harvested after cutting down a flower appears to be some type of food that can appropriate more Pikmin. The onion seems to be a sort of incubator. Needless to say, I must study the strange life form more. Mm. Come on, Bob. You're the first one. You're Bob. Alright, get to work, Bob. Now, as Olimar, we actually do have an attack. We can... I don't know whether we're headbutting or punching enemies. And... That actually does damage things. But incredibly weakly. So, we're not going to worry too much about that. Let's continue harvesting Pikmin. Whilst those guys are growing, let's go take a little look around. We don't have a time limit here. Because this is the tutorial. Uh, this is good. Now, usually we have a time limit. Because uh, we have a day and night cycle. The planet surface is rather hostile during the day. Uh, during the night, sorry. Uh, it's pretty hostile during the day as well. But uh, it's more manageable during the day. Now, as you can see, these pellets have a 1 on them. That means that they are worth 1 seed point. Unless it is going to the same colour onion as the colour of the pellet, and then you'll get a bonus. You'll uh, get twice the seeds, which is two. It's only the one pellets that you get the bonus from. So if you pick up a five pellet, you will still only get five. Okay, let's go take our soldiers, our boys. Oh, look, we have a five pellet here. Let's get these boys in. Uh, boys, do it, do it. Grab the sustenance, grow your numbers. There we go. Now, you can add more. You can see that's got a five above it, which means it needs five people to, uh, five Pikmin to move it. But you can usually double that number, so you could probably put ten on there, and that will move it at twice the rate. So yeah, most of the time after this level, in fact, all of the time after this level, we will have a time limit. Uh, one video will be one day. We only have thirty days until we die of oxygen poisoning. Now, another thing about this game that kind of takes an interesting turn. This game is actually set on Earth. Olimar has crash-landed on Earth, although he doesn't realise that. Because, uh, to these guys, uh, the Earth is an uncharted planet. 
But there are no humans left on Earth because there has been an apocalyptic event that has wiped out all of humanity. And it is just um, items, should we say, of humanity left over. Mainly rubbish. I always thought that was quite an interesting and almost dark tale for Pikmin, but there we go. For Nintendo, I should say. Right, let's go get our boys. Now, notice this says 10 here. This means we need 10 Pikmin to move this item. This game is a puzzle game, but it's, I don't like puzzle games. As a rule, uh, they don't keep my interest. But this game, this game I enjoy immensely. I think it's because it reminds me of really good times. The Pikmin are as curious as children. They form groups to perform tasks that would be impossible for an individual. A glimmer of hope has begun to shine in my heart. If I can make use of their skills, perhaps I can fix my ship. I shall sum up what I have learned of Pikmin conduct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just tells us the controls. Come on, boys. Actually, you boys can stay over there. Let me go harvest the rest of your, your brethren. Now, it's always wise to try and maximize the time in your day. Uh, I've seen people complete this game ludicrously quickly. This will not be a pro run. Um, we, we are going to go for 100% and get all the items. You don't need to get all of the items. There's one there, but we're not going to worry about that just yet. Uh, there are, I think, five parts of the ship that you don't need for survival. They're just for, you know, 100% uh, reasoning. We will be getting them all. Um, but, I mean, the time limit of 30 days is actually huge. You really do struggle in this game, or you really should struggle in this game to run out of time. There's only four areas, I believe, in this game. Uh, the maps are fairly large and complicated. Uh, and there are some Metroidvania kind of uh, tropes to this game as well, like these walls here. Um, we cannot get past that wall, but you can see... There is something over there, but we lack the required... It's all right, Bob. I know, you're one of the good ones, Bob. Um, as you can see, he's trying to break down this wall, and he can't. We actually need another type of Pikmin and another item before we can break that down. But once we've broken a wall down, it's broken down for good. Uh, the walls don't regrow. Right, come on, boys. Now, how's it going over here? I think we're on 20. That would be 25. Have we harvested up everything? Let's have a little look. You can zoom the camera out. The controls are a little bit strange, but that's just the nature of using a Wiimote and a, and a nunchuck here. So, yeah, the controls are a little bit odd, but they work. Now, this gate here... We can actually smash down with our, our Pikmin. Any any type of Pikmin can smash those gates down. But we uh, we can't get to it. So that's a non-issue right now. All right, let's harvest up our boys. Come on, minions. How many Pikmin seeds... When many Pikmin seeds sprout at once, I find it rather tedious to pluck them from the ground individually. My wife always told me I was no good at routine tasks. I guess I'll try to get it all done at once by rapidly tapping A until I pick all of the Pikmin from the ground. I've noticed that when I add Pikmin to my group, they become filled with excitement and flushed with bright colour. Other times, they revert to a paler hue and give off a dim glow. Paying close attention to these differences is bound to help me distinguish between Pikmin. Yeah, so basically, when you've recruited them into your party, they are bright red. When they're idle, they are kind of a dim pink. But that's okay. Now, take note of the leaf on their heads. That indicates how powerful these Pikmin are. They uh, change from a leaf to a bud to a flower. And if they have... Um, a bud or a flower they're stronger and faster than when they have uh, a leaf now you can see I plucked them up if I'd left them in the ground over time they will mature uh, but there are other ways that we shall encounter um, to power them up anyway I think we're good I think I don't want to leave any pellets behind I know sometimes on this level 
Uh, I can get 27 Pikmin. We've got 25 at the moment. So that leads me to believe I've missed a pellet somewhere, but I'm not sure where. Maybe up here, perhaps? Ah, look at our dolphin there. Sorry sight to be sure. Yeah, looks like we do actually... Yeah, we have gathered everything, I think. I'm not sure. Anyway, let's go. Come on, Bob. Let's go get your friends, Bob. Right, 25 in our party. Amazing! There's no mistaking it! My ship's engine rests before my very eyes. By a stroke of pure luck, I have already stumbled across my most important piece of my damaged craft. Fate has smiled upon me, but how will I get it back to the dolphin? Omar, you fool! We shall use the work of these minions. Excellent! Work, my boys. That's what we like. So at the end of each day, we will blast back off into high orbit. And if we leave any Pikmin behind, there's a good chance that they will be killed and eaten by the local wildlife. Uh, there's also a chance that they will become embedded back into the ground and you can find them later. But more often than not, they will be killed. So you want all of your Pikmin safely back at base before the end of the day. Now, whatever you've accomplished uh, during the day stays completed that includes how far you've moved parts so for instance if we were to move this part end the day and leave it there when we uh, return tomorrow it will still be in the same area so you can accumulate progress in that way so nothing is ever really lost which is nice get in there bob It's so satisfying watching the ship come together. Oh, glorious! With the help of these Pikmin, I've taken a huge step back towards home. My ship can once again lift off. The glimmer of hope is beginning to burn more brightly. But what has become of the remaining parts? That search starts tomorrow. Ah, the nighttime theme. Day one. Oh, one day since impact. I have somehow managed to launch the dolphin, but I was surprised to see the onion lift off with me. Perhaps the Pikmin cannot survive overnight on the planet's surface, or have they merely decided to join me for other reasons? Either way, it seems that they will help me again tomorrow. The dolphin is missing 29 parts. If I can't recover them all, I may never return home to my family on planet Hockatate. Analysis shows my life support systems will function for only 29 more days. How can I repair my dolphin in such a short time? A dense forest is visible on the surface below. As it holds the keys to my survival, I'll name it the Forest of Hope. I'll explore it tomorrow. And we get this little screen at the end of each day. It tells us how many parts are remaining, how many Pikmin we have. How many days remaining, how many sprouted, how many lost in battle, left behind, and the change in Pikmin population. Now, above that Pikmin population uh, graph, uh, those bubbles indicate hours of the day. So, the big bubble in the middle is noon, etc. So, let's hit up a save. Save complete. Excellent. And this brings us to the main screen the impact site. Now, you can see how many stars in the lower uh, right. Parts in this area. One star is flashing, which indicates that we have that part. Uh, the other part is greyed out, which means we still have one part to find. We cannot get that part yet. 
because we haven't got the required dudes to do it. But this place, the Forest of Hope, look how many parts we have here. There is a lot. Most of which, well, a lot of which we can get already. Um, so, when we come back, guys, in the morning, we shall fly off to the Forest of Hope and see what we can achieve there. So, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you've enjoyed it. I know I have. And as always, till next time.